Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, colleagues and guests, for uh, accommodating Mother Nature and making time and what can often feel like a frantic pace in this building to pause and thank uh, military past and present and the families that support them. I come in front of you today with just a heart full of gratitude. This is always a special day in the building, and to be quite frank, I always kind of forget how special it is until I wade into it once again. I have a heart full of gratitude for the 120,000 Coloradans that are alive today who served in Vietnam, some who join us on the floor. I have a heart full of gratitude to the families who supported the country while their loved ones serve or fight abroad and then support their loved ones when they return. I have a heart full of gratitude for my grandfather, William Bird Mounsey, who never let me call him grandfather because he thought it was too old. So I grew up with not a grandfather, I grew up with a Bill. <laughs> um, Bill was uh, uh, trained in Camp Hale. Now, if you combine the stories of the Army and the stories of an Irish family, we're not too sure the truthfulness of those two combining in family legends. But family legend does go that he gave the first order at Camp Hale, which was to fall out. Not much of an order, but the first order nonetheless. He then said after uh, he was one of the few officers that they could find at that time who had any sort of winter training experience. So he was brought to Camp Hale to train all the soldiers that were in the 10th Mountain Division. You had a choice of two sizes of skis when you walked to Camp Hale, long or really long. And the first soldiers that got there got the long ones, and soldiers that got there second got the really long ones. And what he said was in the infinite wisdom of the Army, he was sent from the winter warfare of Camp Hale to fight in the Pacific Theater. And he started in Australia, and Japan was his destination. He was the one who taught me the meaning of snafu and foobar. <laughs> I knew those probably at a much younger age than my parents probably would have approved, but he thought it was quite funny. We shared the same birthday, October 17th. We were 60 years apart, and it might have been the fact that we both had blue eyes and no one else in our family did. Or perhaps it was just the, the fate of sharing the same birthday, but we were cut from the same cloth, and I was attached to him by the hip from as early as I can remember. So not only did he teach a young girl what foobar meant, but he also taught me the singular value of serving your country. He also taught me that when you're in a foxhole with a soldier, you don't care who that soldier loves or the color of their skin. I come here with a heart full of gratitude for our Gold Star families for reminding us constantly of the sacrifice our country is built upon. To my mother and grandmother that moved on a moment's notice in the support of the Army that resulted in 13 schools in 12 years. I have a heart full of gratitude today for the military bases across Colorado who keep our military strong. To our African American veterans who served our country often better than our country served them. I have a heart full of gratitude today to the Vietnam vets who long after the capture of Saigon bore the conflict of a nation on their shoulders and whose persistence of service has created a better culture of soldier support for all those who came after them. I have a heart full of gratitude to the 10th Mountain Division, past and present, for their impact on me and for all of Colorado and this great nation. Finally, I have a particularly heart full of gratitude today for the colleagues that not only serve this great state as senators and as representatives, but who also served our nation in the military. Climb to glory. <laughs>